Hello and welcome back to Tinker Talks Guns. This time we're going to be talking about cartridge conversion revolvers. Um, by the 1860s, the writing was on the wall, and as soon as Roland White's patent on the board through cylinder, which allowed the use of metallic cartridges, expired in the United States, uh, Remington introduced conversions for their popular Remington 1858 cap and ball service revolver, which was nominally in 44 caliber. Of course, since everybody lies about caliber, the bore is actually 452. Whatever. Um, these originally were chambered as a five shooter because there wasn't room for the casing properly in the cap and ball cylinder. Um, these were introduced as a five shooter in 46 Remington, which was a 45 caliber rim fire cartridge. And um, they had some modest popularity. And nowadays, if you buy yourself a reproduction Uberti or Pieta 1858 cap and ball revolver, you can buy from a couple different places, notably Howells and Kirst, uh, conversion cylinders so that you can fire 45 Colt in your 1858 Navy. And um, yes, I know the gun says black powder only on the barrel, but thousands or tens of thousands of people fire smokeless rounds through them just fine once they have the cartridge conversion. Typically these cylinders are made from half hard 4140 steel and um, they're quite robust and quite quite capable of withstanding modern loads. Not hot Reming, uh, Ruger only loads or any of that kind of crap. But um for various reasons, I became fascinated with cartridge conversion revolvers, and I actually bought a cursed conversion and converted one, and then I decided to make my own, because me. Um, and this is one of several results of that. And as you can see, it is not at all stock looking. <laughs> and it has a five shot cylinder chambered for 450 atoms because I reload it why not and um, we'll go to the tabletop and take a closer look at this so as we discussed in the Webley RIC video um, this is 450 atoms and it's an adorable stubby little cartoon bullet which in this case is using a charge of black powder to push a 225 grain bullet at about 650 feet per second. Um, the gun has been modified a lot from standard Remington trim in addition to the cartridge conversion. Um, first of all, it's been given a Bisley style grip and um, custom Bolivian rosewood grips and shortened the barrel to three and three quarter inches because seven and a half inches seemed a bit excessive. And um, I altered the loading lever, which normally latches at the front on the seven and a half inch barrel to have a latch here. So you just pull that forward and you can rotate that down. And if you insert the cap and ball cylinder, you can still use the loading lever to load it. Now to unload and show clear, it's very simple. Like the original Remington conversions, there's there's no gate here, uh, just a place for the bullets to fall out, and um, you can just rotate the cylinder and see that there's no cartridges in the holes. Now, what I have done on this one is I have made the breech plate that contains the firing pin to conform to the shape of the blast shield on the revolver. So if it's loaded, you can actually see, notice this is a dummy cartridge. You can actually see that the cartridge is in place. And not only does it seem slicker, it just, it has a practical function. You can tell if the car gun is loaded. So uh, for pulling empties out or for pulling loaded rounds out, there's a little notch cut at the base of the cylinder so you can hook a fingernail or a tool in there and just get the cartridge out. This would not be advisable with original style cartridges because they have what's called a balloon head case 
and um, they might blow out through that slot if you were unlucky or had a poorly made case. So, let's disassemble this and show you some more details. First, we drop the loading lever, pull the cylinder axis out, and then, <laughs> in theory, we can remove the cylinder. In practice, what we need to do is bring it to half cock and press on the firing pin to get it to move past the frame. And it's a little fussy because, frankly, the gun wasn't designed for this. And it's going to be even more fussy because we're doing a video. Because that's how it works. There we go. So, as you can see, we have a breech plate with a spot for the pole to move in to rotate the cylinder. And it has a spring-loaded firing pin. And then the cylinder, which is turned down from uh, 41 for half hard 4140, um, has five chambers. There's a notch to rest the hammer no, or the firing pin in between the chambers so that you can load all five chambers. So the cylinder is bored for 450 atoms, so longer cartridges like 45 ACP don't quite fit, which is as you want it. And I selected 450 atoms in part because why not I reload it, and second of all because then some unimagined future idiot can't stick an overpowered load in it and blow the blow themselves and the gun up. But it's um it's quite a nice little cartridge to shoot. And as you can see, I could not quite get every single cylinder perfectly spaced, but it doesn't matter because they're indexed correctly from the star. So, plate fits over, and slips into the gun, there we go, and then slide in the cylinder axis pin pop the lever, which again is modified from stock to latch at the rear, and um, load it up and you're ready to go. Of course, sometimes you're more ready than others, as the <laughs> heavily edited video demonstrates. And um, in this caliber, it's quite a pleasant gun to shoot. It's about like shooting a 4-inch 38. And roughly in that power range too so it's no surprise and it's just fun now the sights nothing to write home about there's a v-notch rear and a very narrow brass blade front that is slotted into the barrel and silver soldered in place and uh it's actually quite reasonably accurate at seven yards and it's, it's a lot of fun. It is not by any means a practical gun. And after doing quite a few of these, I stopped doing them. But uh, if you like Western guns and want something a little different, cartridge conversions could be a thing for you. In what we call the Old West period, cartridge conversion revolvers were quite common. In fact, they were more common than many of the more famous production revolvers. Um, some of them were not converted. They were made as cartridge revolvers at the factory based on existing cap and ball models. And a number of them were converted by individuals, gunsmiths, whatever. Um, the cartridge this gun fires, 450 Adams, was originally intended to be fired in cartridge conversion revolvers, in this case Adams revolvers owned by the British military. And so it seemed kind of appropriate to chamber it in the Remington. And um, after the Civil War, there were a lot of 1860 Army and 1851 Navy revolvers around and parts for even more at the factories. And so it was, they remained in use for a long time as cap and ball revolvers. And as I said, a lot of them were converted to fire cartridges. Um, 
And uh, you can see this reflected more in spaghetti westerns than Hollywood movies. Because in the Italian westerns, they very, very often used converted cap and ball revolvers that fired cartridges. Nowadays, you can buy factory-made conversions, converted revolvers, from uh, Taylor's, Cimarron, a number of other companies. And, um, or you can get a conversion cylinder from Howells or Kirst and do one up yourself in any variety of styles. Or if you're some kind of freak with a few machine tools, you can actually do your own, but I don't recommend it. Anyway, I hope this finds you well. Uh, stay safe, take care. Don't forget to hit like and subscribe. And if you feel motivated, you can click the link below in the description and support me on Patreon.